Man, how you doing? Good I, to see you. I'm good. I'm long week. Uh, I think I'm on like four yeah. hours of sleep last night. Oh so, my god, dude! Oh, it's, I mean, yeah, it's the way down goes. The goes you know? Baby territory, yeah. <laughs> Two goats on one life. Thank you, King. So the you know obviously people can jump back and forth, but what I'm going to ask is that uh, we do our best to hold a few of the questions because I've got quite a few of my own, and then uh, we can segue into a potential Q and A if all the movie things feels up to it. Uh, that'll be completely up to him. Uh, and, yeah. and we'll, cool. we'll go from there. So, uh, it'll be formal, informal, uh, where I have some actual questions, but we're still just, oh, wow. Okay. As friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I thought, I thought about <laughs> this because I, you know, we don't all know people that have done anything to do with a fairly large production. And so you, you mm -hmm. being a person that has, I know people are curious and I know I am. So, yeah. But before we get into that, I actually have just some other questions because I know you did some crazy things like going to film school, which for me w would have been a dream, but never happened. And I wanted to mm. to know, like, w what got you into movies? Like, what got you going into film in the first place, like when you were young? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, and I think I've actually made like a TikTok about it, like just touching a little bit on that. And it was really like my mom, like we... Uh, um, my mom and I were always like watching movies. She, she very much knew like every actor and actress's name and everything, you know? And I kind of like took that and like went off the deep end with like getting really into like producers and directors and cinematographers and writers and knowing all, all about that end of things. But, um, and like we would watch all the award shows every year as like a tradition. And she got me into some, some of the classic stuff and some, pretty off the wall stuff too. Like I always talk about the pirate movie mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and like not a lot of people, a lot of, not a lot of people know about the pirate movie, but that movie was like a really beloved. It, I mean, it's terrible. Let's, I mean, oh, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's pretty bad, but it's like a beloved movie of mine from my childhood, you know, and my, and just memories of my mom. So she really got me into it. And I was always a creative person. Like I was always drawing, drawing comic books. Nice. Um, Do you still have some, but then I got, books? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I've got stuff from like the 90s. And yeah. um, that's kind of when I started. You drew? Do you have the ones you drew? Oh, you know, actually, I don't. I oh. don't have any of that old. Yeah, I know. I don't have any of that old stuff. Um, I think I have some photos of some of the stuff I drew, but that's there's cool. a lot of like DC Comics based stuff. I was really into DC at the time. But now you're but, more um, Marvel, would you say? I'm like both. I'm very much into both. Yeah, it's, it's funny because like as I got older, I started digging more into Marvel. Um, and I feel like that kind of says something about, you know, Marvel. I was kind of like, as you mature, you kind of get more more into it, maybe more into Marvel. But I've heard that um, go the other way with some people, so that's interesting. Um, oh, funny. I've yeah, yeah. Going, no, I, that's just how for the older for crowd. But I always thought yeah, DC. I think maybe be, now it's that way. It might be. But I think DC's always been more character driven and they're not a really connective universe, even though people assume they are. Right. And Marvel has always been this yeah. fully interconnected story and, and arc based totally. system rather mm -hmm. than even character driven. This is why a B yeah. and C T characters now are actually big deals when back then they were nobodies. You know. That's a good point. Well, yeah, started totally. as a B tier character. He's just this new guy mm -hmm. in the block, so which is very yeah. popular. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so, okay. Yeah. So I, so I got into photography, and, yeah, photography is really what launched it, and then I I put all that on hold when I joined the military, so. Oh, military. And then, uh, yeah, and then. Uh, what branch? You got to gotta, yeah. gotta ask what branch. Oh, thank you for I was, that. I was in the Navy for 10 years, 10 and a half years. And what did, because um, in the Army, we would say, who, you know, that's, or the, the Marines yeah. would say, simplify. What do you guys say? Um, so, so the Marines also said like, hoorah, right. we kind of, we took a lot of stuff. We kind of stole a lot of stuff from the Marines. We took their core values. They had honor, courage, commitment was their core values. And we're like, oh, okay, we'll take that. Cause technically the Marines are like a department of the Navy. Right. So we kind of took a lot of their stuff. So we took the hoorah kind of thing, but the honor, courage, commitment was our core values kind of thing. So, That's so awesome. we took a lot of that. And thank you yeah. for your service. Oh yeah. No, no, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, of thanks. course. It was, uh, it was fun. It was totally different than filmmaking, of course, but. Um, did you learn and, more about filmmaking from your time in the military? In <laughs> no. Not even related? No, to no, no. But, I mean, I will say it did give me a lot more life experience, and I got to see things I would never have seen before. And it's funny because, like, Roger Deakins, like, one of my, like, 
I mean, I basically worship Roger Deakins. Um, he's always one of his like tips for uh, people that get into filmmaking, the cinematography specifically is like, he's always says, go out there and experience life. Like, you know, do things, experience things, find like get in different cultures. I think that is a, was a big thing with the military for me was I got to experience and see things that I would have never experienced ever in my life if I hadn't. So, so that's I think fair. from that, that respect, yeah, that's kind of, that kind of helped me. You so know, to see life things experience differently. helped you grow over mm-hmm. even as a, even as a person trying to consider film or art. Um, makes sense. Yeah, exactly. That makes perfect yeah. Sense. And then, and then eventually I, I got my creative bug came back and I wanted to get back into writing and then that turned into looking into screenwriting. So, and that's how the film school thing started. So that was literally my yep. next question. How did, how, oh, funny. What, where did you, how yeah. did you end up going to film school? And if you're willing to tell us what film school did you go to, if you're willing to tell us. No. Yeah. I went to two. Um, one was a pretty bad experience and one was a very great experience. So, and I don't recommend anyone doing this. It's kind of hard okay. now with COVID, but so my first school was like, I went to the Academy of Art university it was out of san francisco but i was still in the military at the time so i did an online version of film school which is not <laughs> it was terrible like that's it was like, so like it was learning difficult. film from a book yeah basically yeah yeah like it was I, I will say this like yeah so the screenwriting stuff was great like i did all i knocked out all my screenwriting stuff and that was that was totally doable via online but i had like an editing thing where i had to shoot stuff and i did i didn't have access to like any like real actors that had like rope all my buddies in and none of them, it was just, man, this is a, I mean, I still have like tapes. Like I was, everything was shot on like DV tape. Oh, and wow. uh, yeah, so this is before even like HD cameras. Were, yeah, like, no, thing, too. When so I was working, I told back. you that I did the, the yeah. cable television, you know, for a little while and we were exactly. running on DV tapes uh, until I had yeah. to convert them to actual VHS to get them on there. <laughs> yeah. Because the old timers yeah. at the channel were like, we're not going to upgrade. And I'm like, oh my god, oh, tell man. me about it. Like, yeah, we, yeah, were, yeah. we were that, like, we had, we could have, and they wouldn't. And then I left mm-hmm. and they upgraded. I was very, I was yeah, like, man, I could have made good shit. I had a very similar experience with my first, like, video production house that I worked at. This oh, really? little, little, like, three man crew. It was just me, one other guy, and the owner. And he was very much against, like, upgrading to HD. But I was like, eventually we have to do it. Like, everything's going to HD. So we got to do it. Yeah. Guess who just joined my chat? Oh, who just joined? Mr. Marvelite. But we have others. We have many oh, others right. here Sweet. as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, I got some that's on awesome. this side, too. I just want to make sure everybody's able to, to see us and talk. And oh, say yeah. Hi. So, I see everybody. I don't want to <laughs> want to ignore them. But, no, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but but we will. We, we, we will talk to everybody. But we've we've got a few cool. more questions yeah, yeah. here. Uh, because yeah. we're going to lead. We're leading up to something. We're leading to something. Yeah. Uh, one. And then, and then get to so, the, so the, the, other, the other film school I went to after two years of that was... Um, the Art Institute of Portland. So I moved back to Portland. I was living in Maryland at the time, and then I moved back to Portland. And that was an incredible experience because that's really, um, oh, wow, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Marvel Light. <laughs> um, uh, that Aww. was an incredible experience. That's what, what changed my, that's what really changed, changed everything for me. So coming back to Portland, working with actual people, and like, it was like a boot camp. I mean, every single week we were shooting something and just cranking out stuff. It was incredible. I mean, it's like, that's the way to go. Just like, cause we were making mistakes left and right, you know, like we we're, but that's when you want to do it is like when you're in school and then you can critique it and get better each week. And it was amazing. It was hard work. I will say that, but, um, and most of it's like you're putting pressure on yourself, but well, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. I still have like really great friends from, from that experience. And, yeah, so that's awesome. that's kind of how it, everything. Yeah, that's kind of how everything. If I hadn't gone to that school, I wouldn't have gotten onto Portlandia, which is kind of how everything, Got you know, evolved Portland. from there. So that's yeah. very very cool. And you you, yeah. you, I could just sit here and you'll just you'll do it. I don't even have to ask <laughs> just, the questions. I'm just kind of like yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I love it. it. No, I I really do love it. I'm fascinated to listen. Um, there was one about film school, so. I kind of want to know yeah. what was the best experience that you have, and then what was the worst experience you had in film school, and at, at the at the good Ooh. film school. So we'll just go with the Portland Film School and what that was. Like. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh man, that's tough because 
the there's so many like really great experiences um i mean probably one of the best was being able to work on on portlandia i worked season four um i met a lot of really great people that i'm still in, in touch with that's awesome um and that was like that was kind of like all over the place um another kind of boot camp but that was tough too because i was trying to balance school with trying to like get as much experience on that set as possible and yeah that was <laughs> that was i wasn't really sleeping a lot back then so <laughs> i wouldn't imagine um yeah but it, it was it was totally worth it um but besides so, that i think like getting my like thesis film done that was a very emotional experience for me and like just really impactful and like seeing it on a big screen like we would screen all of our thesis films we'd have like a huge screening where everyone got together we'd invite friends and family and we have like a series of short films shown at like a, a legit theater um and it was like a huge deal it was like a, a real premiere event it would, it would show like on the marquee of the theater and everything that yeah so it was that was an amazing experience i felt like i wanted to vomit the whole time but <laughs> it's so because it's so nerve-wracking but like that means it means yeah. something like it really like yeah it, no you, know, you didn't want to screw it up like you were yeah, yeah. no that's yeah. really cool um, um so on portlandia um is that really different than working because you've worked now that means you've worked both a tv set and a movie set is there a big difference mm -hmm. between the two um not really it they're all they're all quite different from each other i mean all the basics are the same you know i mean um each one is slightly different like portlandia was all location based we didn't really shoot in studios ever unless they really had to they were we'd rent out like a, a studio for like a day right you know we'd shoot at some small place where they needed a sound stage but um most of the time it was like we were just going around portland literally just like shooting in people's houses yeah, <laughs> and I mean, stuff would just take over if anybody's and, seen the yeah. show like that's what most yeah the show exactly is, is right there in that's portland literally so. what it is yeah, yeah. where so. we're going to different businesses you know and taking over and um there's one time we super early in the morning we took we took over like a whole neighborhood basically we, we closed down this whole intersection mm -hmm. of the street in north portland and that was like a headache i mean because we had like i had we had like so there's a thing when you're a pa you have to what's called a lock up you have to lock up a set and you set you basically set all these pas like pawns and you block you set them at different points to help block this block people and like cars and vehicles from coming in and um that this dangerous. one like delivery yeah it, it, it can be but it's i mean it's it's clearly marked we had like barricades and stuff okay. but still people like your set people, security people, in a you sense. know essentially yeah yeah you're like trying to help people not go into the scene because like one it can like ruin the scene but two they may not want to be on camera and not even realize it you know be like oh and plus it was kind of a dangerous stuff because we had a lot of cars involved in this intersection so that makes me wonder yeah how many accidental pa mess ups have led to people being on screen that weren't screen. oh yeah, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> there's probably a lot yeah there's probably like accidental background walking in like we've we've definitely had it where it's like i've been on the radio with someone and someone's like bitching at me to be like i'm trying to block someone to hold them while they're while they're rolling you know and it's like and the person gets impatient and i'm like oh we got a bogey we got a bogey you know on the radio and, right. and they just walks through the seat and you're just like and the, and like you know first ad or second ad is just like uh just let them go fine they're just gonna if they blend in, you know, what yeah, exactly. No, totally. If, if, now, if, if it's a sci-fi movie, camera, you know, and they're dressed in yeah. Western gear. <laughs> and they're wearing street clothes. Yeah, yeah. that's going to look a little odd. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. So. Unless it's like, yeah, anyway. So, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> outside of film school, how many projects have you done, ultimately, have you worked on until your current position? Um. I'd say about five. Some are smaller too. Like there was this, there was one show shot here that that was a that was a real that was a really low budget TV show. It was like for some like satellite network. Interesting. That I'd never even heard of. It was like a World War II thing too. So it was like they shot in like North Portland and they turned parts of North Portland to like World War II like France. <laughs> you know, it's like crazy. It's like yeah. But it was super low budget, like Crafty was pretty bad. 
so for those that don't know crafty is basically like craft services like the food and the setup was, was it's it like not AMPM, catering but it's like the snacks them, but what is it like AMPM oh yeah pretty much yeah yeah it was it was not yeah lunch wasn't that great i was actually doing sound on that one too so Interesting. uh i was yeah so I've, I've kind of been a little bit all over the place but that but means... the bigger stuff i've i've done a few projects that means that the the PA or not the PA, but the number of positions you hold on a production is parent or is like tantamount to the the budget and to how many people could work on the. Oh thing. yeah. So you might oh yeah yeah seven, for eight, sure twelve ten jobs you know whatever. Uh huh. That's interesting. No, that's exactly right. Yeah, because because I've worked on like super indie like short films, um, where I'm like the DP, but I'm also like also my own grip. I'm also my own electrician <laughs> thanks marley and yeah doing everything i'm my own cameraman like m- most of the time i'm operating camera if i'm a dp also so like you don't really have all that but um so you're, you're kind of like running all over the place but it yeah that, that's odd. a good way of putting it the smaller the budget the more you're taking on but um yeah no it, it it seems odd that on the large large productions that some of those jobs are parsed out to more than one person like i understand cameraman's mm-hmm. job is hard a camera person's job is very oh hard. yeah yeah There's a and they gotta focus to you know okay. yeah i understand yeah, what exactly. it's like because i am also a photographer and we've talked about that i know what mm-hmm. it's you're saying funny things until i laugh i understand that we're trying to have a, a an interview with all the movie things about his work in uh in movies and in television and so i totally want to interact with the chat and we will very soon but we're just asking some questions uh, up front so no no you're fine and i appreciate you wanting to joke too because we are (laughs) normally like that and this is fun uh but we're we're just doing it this way and it's all good i wanted this to be interactive so please just still hang out and have fun yeah Uh, i'm loving seeing everyone here too so far it's been really great absolutely absolutely so So, uh, all our all our friends well, I don't remember. Oh, as a person who's done photography, I totally understand how long yeah. you can stand just even behind a still camera to get the right shot. Uh, mm-hmm. I've stood hours to get one picture. Um, oh, yeah. And that's not abnormal. Um, and I'm not talking about hiking out into the woods either. I'm talking about just right. taking a picture of a bird, if you do it right, can take a long time. Yeah. With the right lighting and knowing where they're coming from and so on. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I get it. Um, so in, in that way, mm-hmm. especially with those giant cameras that they have on movie sets, there's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, it takes a team. Yeah. It's a full team of people. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the higher the quality, the bigger the cameras always had to be. Luckily, we're getting to a point yeah. where they're shrinking them eventually. Oh, my God. Yeah. Where... Like, yeah. Well, yeah I, I can go. I can talk about that for days. Like, just like, cameras on these I'm kind of like a super camera nerd, but right. But these yeah. cameras on these phones are as good as some movie cameras from back in the day. So. Oh, they're getting yeah, they're getting crazy. I mean, the new the 13 is pretty insane, and it it you can actually like do rack focus with it now and everything, which is kind of incredible with a little tiny camera with this. But but still, there's something to be said about like a cinema quality, like an Alexa you know, compared to, I mean, you're not going to get Alexa quality with, with, you know, a phone here, but no, still, it's, getting, still, it's like, getting close. And I've joked with people that I work with cause I work in it and a lot, yeah. of, rod, a lot of computer and camera nerds. And we joked right. about how these cameras are great on these things, but then they talk about, it actually has three times, you know, um, uh, fo- uh, what am I trying to say? Not optical, but yeah, mm-hmm. optical zoom on some yeah. of phones which is yeah, like, oh, yeah. wow that's amazing mm-hmm. three times Ooh. i know what? <laughs> and it's great but then they start talking about digital zoom and i'm like get that out of here we don't need digital zoom yeah so exactly you're in yeah picture, don't you're gonna do yeah don't give me that digital zoom so, yeah i know <laughs> um so yeah nothing beats a dslr or bigger you know and i've looked at some of those like, right. heavier duty high end not even like you have a very high end camera and i've looked at you know, the ones above that, you know, $25,000 cameras. And yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I drool over the yeah. specs, you know, anyway, we could, I like know. you said, I'm also, we could do this all night. Yeah. We could. <laughs> uh, so, um, let's go to what does a, a production assistant do? What, what's the main jobs of a production assistant? Um, yeah. So they're, I, I like to say they're kind of like the backbone of any production. Um, most like a set PA, there are different PAs. There's like office PAs and admin PAs. And you can even have like a PA for camera department, a PA for wardrobe, PA for art department. Um, but 
what most people think of when they think of a PA is like the set PA, which is what most of my experience was. And a set PA is basically works in the AD department. So like the, the first AD is kind of like your head honcho. And um, then it just kind of goes from there. There's like second, 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 and so on. Right. And then go down to the PAs. Um, and a lot of times it's just like, it goes from little things like getting coffee or like helping out as much as you can just to make things easier for anyone on set, you know, whether it be the actors or the director or, or just like your fellow PAs, even like whatever you can do to help make things easier. And if you can like anticipate those things, that's huge. If you can like, and you do that eventually, like you start knowing like people, like what they like kind of thing. And you can kind of like start getting coffee or like other things for them ahead of time. You know, if you, especially when you see them every single day, well, yeah, no, um, I mean, I, yeah, I would, I would yeah. hope you learn people. It's got to be weird to work on a job for just a short period of time, and then that's it. You may see some of those people again, possibly. Yeah, but it depends on yeah, where yeah. they work and what productions they work on, and right, you know, exactly. Um, it's got to be interesting. Yeah. It's an interesting field because it's not like people who work retail and they work the same job with the same people for. 15 yeah, it's years. just like, right. Um, exactly. I mean, it's sort of the same. Yeah. I guess we do hop around sales yeah, anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. so the way you described it, it almost sounded like the PAs are the spine of the production where like without them, you would have no other structure within the bone or the body. Um, they keep, it yeah, they kind of just like, yeah, they, they really like being a PA really just helps everyone else be able to focus on their job. Like, you know, I mean, you don't want your first AD. I mean, I can't imagine I've been a first AD before on smaller stuff, but I can't imagine being a first AD like on green room. He was amazing, but he had to be a hard ass sometimes, mm -hmm. understandably so. And when you have to be, but he's got to, they got to focus so much on just everything that if you can like make things easier for other people so they can focus on that job, because sometimes safety is a, a concern too. Like then that, then you've, you've done your job as a PA, you know, and of course you're like locking up sets, like I mentioned. And, and, um, and sometimes people don't pay attention when we're rolling, you know, even though it's like called out everywhere and you like yell it out and repeat it to everyone on set, people will still start to talk and like that stuff carries. <laughs> and then you have to kind of like gently remind them like, Hey, we're rolling. So, like, okay. The same thing that mouth. happens in the college, you know, uh, classroom yeah. or, or you're, you're, you're at work and you're trying to focus on what the boss is saying or whatever it is. There's still yeah. those yahoos. That think oh yeah. It's okay yeah. To talk. <laughs> In a place where you're supposed to be the most silent you can. Be super quiet. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the thing is, like, people That's know funny. this. Like, they've done it before. Like, you know. So. But sometimes you get caught up and you're just not paying attention to when they're rolling. And Well, so. and you might hear it but, enough yeah. times that you're just like, wait, action? What's yeah, oh, just, action? Ex you know, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. You know. But there is a reason they call mm -hmm. it out. Uh, so you mentioned yeah. you mentioned green room and you, you you're like the perfect mm -hmm. segueer like you just like you know <laughs> how to, Marvel I thank you so much my friend um, and thank you to everybody who is in hey, the, in in the chat uh, thank you to Mr Marvelite to DVD killed the VCR who I, I love your name I've always loved your name uh, Cali Star <laughs> uh, Rocket Tyke or Rocker Tycoon I always want to say Rocket because the R disappears but thank you to all you guys and Honest John Noble there's so many people that have st showed up there's a lot more up up the list that's awesome uh, i know yeah. i know that juan's here i know that oh cool yeah and i know that other people showed up and then jumped over to you which is awesome and I, i'm glad everybody's here so yeah segue uh into uh mm -hmm. what i you know have wanted to know a bit more about as well just because this is interesting mm -hmm. because i i'm a big fan of this film so i'm gonna i'm gonna fan boy out here a little yeah. bit fan girl out whatever whatever floats people's boats <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, you worked on Green Room, which was a 2015 mm -hmm. production um, starring Anton Yelchin, Imogen uh, Poots, uh, and of course mm -hmm. with the illustrious and amazing Patrick Stewart, um, yeah. who, who everybody loves. And we'll, we'll get to all the, that. That's, that. That's actually not why I want to talk to you about the film, because I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a bit of a new movie nerd, so I want to know more about the production rather than the celebrity stuff. And so, yeah. how do you go about getting a PA job on something like that? I mean, it's an A24 film. Uh, people know this film pretty much within the horror genre. Uh, people who are horror fans, yeah. and people who like edgy thrillers uh, know this film well. So, uh, and mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of people uh, 
in here that are interested to know more. Um, so how, how does one get that kind of a job? Yeah. So it's funny you mentioned that because it goes back to Portlandia. Like they always say, you know, there, there's a saying, like, it doesn't matter who, you know, it matters who knows you really. It's, it's all about who knows you. And I'm, I was just like, so focused on Portlandia and I made such an impact there. Apparently people remembered me. Those people went on to other productions and they needed other people to like fill out PA roles. So they would remember me and give me a call. So I went on to work on the librarians, which then those people were, and I met other people that worked on Portlandia, but were also new to librarians. They would go on other productions and then, then they would like, call me there were some times where i'd have to like turn down things too because i was already dedicated to another production so some people would pull me on the grim and you know for sometimes i do day work here and there for other stuff and then someone pulled me on to like that little production um but because green room was being was utilizing all the same stuff that librarians was so the librarians was shot in um clackmas oregon Whereas where the sound stages are, it's just like these warehouses. Like you would never know that there was like these sound stages there. You, it's like in this industrial area of Clackness, and um, and they're kind of just hidden back there. But that's where Green Room was shot. On like all the interior stuff was shot in these sound stages in Clackness, Oregon, and uh, and that was the librarians' offices as well as their sound stages. So because of that, like other people were that worked on the librarians. Pretty much almost everyone that worked on librarians worked on this film as far as local crew, hmm. um, like grips and electric and stuff like that were all from those productions. So it was kind of a great thing because like we used a lot of Portland based crew on that film. Um, but like they brought in their DP, they brought in their first AD and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's how I got onto it. it was just like it goes back to my first experience on Portlandia and just from there. That's kind of how it really... I mean, as far as anyone who's worked in this stuff kind of knows, like, that's who how you, know. you get called back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And due yeah. diligence. You definitely sounds like you yeah. need your due diligence. So that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. like, just work hard, you know, and just try to be memorable for the right reasons, you know, right. <laughs> not for be the helpful. wrong. wrong. Not yeah. Yeah. Be helpful to the, and... to the, to the production. You're yeah. trying to make a movie together. Right. You want to get it yep. done. You want to get it to the audience. So the audience can go, wow, that was amazing. Um, yeah. So I was looking at credits and I did see how the kind of the way they break down. And I've kind of looked at that many times before. And you've, you've right. helped. And if you guys don't follow all the movie things already, I don't know what you're doing because he is amazing. And his content is some of the most informative, uh, the most, it is the most informative movie TikToks TikTok. I've seen on That's TikTok. Right. And I've been on TikTok <laughs> for you, a buddy. year, not just as a creator, but also as a, as a as a as a person who follows uh so i mm-hmm. i can tell you that i'm in film tiktok and this dude this dude whichever side he's on for you i don't know he's freaking <laughs> amazing and i'm not just i'm not Thank just you. blowing smoke and uh, <clears throat> he's also a co-host on my show but anyway right. so that's right <laughs> <laughs> um so and that's the real study if you don't uh, watch the real study again i don't know what you're doing that's sunday night seven o'clock tomorrow night yeah tomorrow's gonna be a good one we're gonna be talking yeah. about some good stuff anyway uh that aside <laughs> Um, the buildings where they, the librarians, you said, where they filmed the interiors, mm-hmm. those were the punk stage and the green room itself and all of those shots in the green room yeah, or in green room. Yeah, I yeah. just want to call it the green room because of the show. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's a totally different show about yeah. comedy. Also. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's interesting because they can, dre- that yeah. means that the set dressers are doing a fantastic job. Uh, of making that oh, place yeah. so, completely different. Yeah, the production designer on that is, he's worked with Jeremy Saunier. Jeremy Saunier was the director. And he's pretty much used the same production designer for all his stuff. So and he's gone on to go to do like season um, season three of True Detective. Mm. And he brought that production designer on there. Um, he's done, he did another film with Jeffrey Wright that was on Netflix um, I'm forgetting the name of it, but he brought that production designer on with him. So, and he's a really, really great guy. But yeah, like the attention to detail isn't, I mean, I have like pictures. I wish I could show you pictures that, but like they would literally go in because there's a lot of like graffiti all over the walls inside of the like, you know, the sound, the stage area and the, where the band plays. 
and they literally like drew all that stuff by hand and everything for <laughs> it took them forever I be surprised but the it, detail yeah. that we ignore no. in film that makes us fe the feeling oh my that we God. get and this is yeah. something i was going to ask about later but i want this is a perfect time to ask it mm -hmm. the feeling we get when watching a movie is crafted right it is not just yeah. there it's literally created and i wanted to ask if you ever felt while working on a production the same way we would feel when we watch the production or is it so movie magic that you don't quite get that sense on the set? No, I was like blown away. Like I probably had even more respect for movies. And just because it's like, it's one of the few mediums where like all like artistic and creative disciplines come together for a greater purpose. You know what I mean? Cause you got some, like one example was they, they brought, they would, they bought like a brand new, Oh, what was it? This is just a perfect example of what they do. They bought in a, a brand new like air conditioner or vacuum cleaner. I can't remember what it was, but it was just like a set dressing thing, and it was brand new. And they're like, okay, this looks too new. And then they just like like made it look disgusting and just messed it all up, and just so like they could put it in there, you know. And like, but they took their time to make it look like this old thing. What a job. And just like, it, it's not a prop either. They're, like they don't interact with it. It's just sitting in the scene. It's but a it's set, just it's a set dressing yeah. more than it's, it's a, a set dressing right. thing. That's yeah. Funny. And it's like, just that kind of, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, there was even like a, a working kitchen that they had back there that you barely see in the film, you know, like they run through it at one, one point near the end of the film, you know, right. when like they're trying to escape. Um, and you barely barely ever see anything in there but if, but if you walked in there on set like it's like fully like ready to go kind of thing like they even had like water running too so um yeah it was i crazy. appreciate <laughs> that though because the more real it yeah. is you know um yeah when actors are willing to do their stunts you know when those kinds of yeah. things that can draw you in because i i don't know how many times mm -hmm. the second viewing of true lies i noticed that's not arnold running down the snowbank uh, yeah, that's not at all. That, that those are ankle killing moves, and they're not going to let the billion dollar actor do that. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, I had so much. I, I loved. I was just in awe of watching all these amazing people do that work. But yeah, the production, the art department was amazing. So you told me you, and that's amazing. I, I, I and watching the film again, that movie has such a really. It's yeah, a, it's a somber feeling almost all the way through the whole mm -hmm. feeling. It's it's, it's right. Yeah, it really pulls you in just the way it mm -hmm. starts. Even um, you can yeah. feel you feel downtrodden almost immediately, um, mm -hmm. which I appreciate because it works. Um, so you told me that you didn't know what green room was about until you had gotten the position. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was funny. Like they just. I think I don't know if they're trying to keep it secret or not, but. I, I didn't know anything about it. They were like, hey, do you want to come work on Green Room? And they didn't really know what it was about either. They were kind of like, it was early on. They just were trying to get things going, you know, ahead of time and schedule things. And um, I was like, yeah, sure. Because I was more attracted to, like, the other people that were going to be working on it. You know, like, people that I've worked with in the past. So that, that was, like, my first reason for joining. Um also, I didn't have anything else going on at the time, but um, so a job of yeah, convenience, just the, but also good. Yeah, yeah, but also yeah, but um, and at the time, just judging by the title, I would have never guessed it was this <laughs> insane, insane film that we did. No, I mean, what did you think it was based um, on the title? Because a green room, based on the title, a, you know, it's about bands or yeah. club. You no, know, totally. Stuff. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be some like, like kind of like a drama, like just this. Like showgirls or something. Of, yeah, just some like something totally opposite of what it is. You know, like I was not thinking it was gonna be like this at all. And then I and then I heard who what director it was, and then I started looking up his stuff mm -hmm. and watched more of his films. I was like, oh, okay, this because it's if you ever seen Blue Ruin, which is an early film of his of oh, Jeremy wow. Saunier's, he shot it too and directed it. Um, and also the lead actor that's in that film is in green room. Um, they're like good buddies from Virginia. Nice. And uh, yeah, if you watch that film, it's really great. It's a good, it's a good, like different kind of revenge film. Uh, but yeah, totally 
based on that film alone, I was like, oh, this is what I'm getting into with, with Green Room. <laughs> so, so after I watched that, I knew what I was getting into. When did you know that it was an A24 production? Did that, was that almost right away? No, okay. no, I had no idea. Cause, cause the thing is you don't necessarily know. Cause I think A24 was a distributor on it. Um, so it was a lot more. So at the time, I don't think. Yeah. So yeah. Cause it was only like $5 million budget. That's okay. like, I know it sounds big, but it's actually real. That's pretty no, that's small. That's like a mall rats. Budget. We that's like, like tiny. Yeah. 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 Exactly. We had pretty small budget. Um, and I don't think A24 was attached right away. Um, so I think they had to like, cause it took some time before it actually like, um, finally screened and cause like we didn't get a Portland screening for a long time. Yeah. It I didn't felt like forever it was anyway. on DVD or Blue. Yeah. I think I, I did. Yeah. There, there was so, no, it was not on my radar for theater. So. Right. Exactly. And, um, yeah. So I think a 24 didn't come on until a little later on, but. Yeah, but that that was totally not within my my radar though at all at the time. It was just really focused on like, you know, day to day getting the work done kind of thing. So. Oh yeah, Mar Marley's seen it. Marley knows what knows what's up with Blue Ruin. Nice. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's cool. I definitely recommend it. So principal photography lasted how long? It was about thirty one, thirty two days. So a little over a month. Yeah. Was it on time and everything went well? So we went like a day or two over. Okay. Which is pretty normal. Um, um, I'm just waving at people as they can. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. So uh, Rachel makes a good point. She's that a, a production can come on while a movie's being made. That's or that's true. a question she asks. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times that's how it goes. Like a lot of times if you see Sun, uh, Sundance films, they don't have a distributor or you know, a production company come on and they'll see it at Sundance and want to buy it so they can distribute it later on. So but that's part of the reason that's you kind want of... to go to Sundance. Like that's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause you're, you're there to like there. purchase the film. Yeah, and exactly. Kevin Smith owes his uh, career I... to being picked up at Sundance. And I'm not sure right. what you mean. I love Kevin and I love all of his work. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's a brilliant filmmaker, but clerks mm-hmm. made the guy and that's sometimes how it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, again, not, not knocking him in any way. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. So principal photography was a month. Now the question is, yeah. as, as a PA, did you work on the production both pre, you know, principal and post? Um, no, no. Post it went once once we wrapped production. I was there just for principal photography, and then it goes off to um, wherever they had had it edited. So and they edited I'm not sure how the correction, all the bells. And yeah, all, all the post stuff. process. Yeah, and like I'm not sure how long that took altogether, but. Um, yeah, there wasn't much marketing, I don't think, behind it, um, but which is part of the post kind of thing. But, yeah, so I was only there for principal photography for those 30, 31, 32 days. So if a movie like this has a $5 million budget and they know that it's mm-hmm. likely not going to, you know, this movie is heavy. I mean, we're talking about, you know, racism. Yeah. We're talking about not neo-Nazis in a uh-huh. modern world. We're talking about where the punk culture has gone to some in negative ways in just in this light. Right. Uh, not that punk culture is a negative uh, but in this mm-hmm. light, it sure is. Uh, and then you, and then you have these young kids just doing the most outrageous thing that they probably should have never done. Who, who does that? <laughs> right. But you know, you you, you hung over, you mm-hmm. pissed off because you're in a Nazi bar. What are you gonna do? Um, yeah. And the graphic nature of this film is is really yes. to the yeah, point yeah, where yeah. I literally uh-huh. had to stop this film, take a breath, and then revisit. Uh, and it's still the same medium, yeah. but man, visceral. Uh, and we'll get to the, mm-hmm. the the special effects here in a minute. But the question is, if they know that it's this kind of budget, they know that it's a much more art, artsy film or a film that's trying to approach, mm-hmm. uh, well, definitely artsy. It's it's an artistic film, without a doubt. Um, was mm-hmm. this a film that was being made because there was just a passion for it? They were trying to send a message or they were trying to get noticed or, I mean... It, or they just loved making the movie. I, I just, I want to understand the reason behind a small production like this. Yeah. I, I don't know too much about that. I, um, I know Jeremy Saunier, he wrote it. And so I think it was like an experience he had not like this exact experience, but it was like from stories and stuff he had heard growing up in Virginia. And which was kind of an interesting thing. Like 
originally I think they were going to shoot it on the East Coast. And, um, and I can't remember, someone mentioned to him about Oregon and, and how it might have actually been cheaper to shoot in Oregon and everything. So that, so we kind of got, we kind of lucked out. It is, and, by the and way, plus, it like, is cheaper. People should come here and shoot in Oregon, please. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, and plus we all, we, we had like this punk culture in our past, but also like the neo-Nazi culture in our past mm-hmm. as well. And um, so I think that was, that mix of things was what attracted him to shoot here. Uh, but as far as like the reason behind it, I, I think it was just like a story he wanted to tell because of his experiences, he's was close to close to home for him. So no, that makes yeah. sense, and and that's a good reason yeah. to make a movie. Uh, Marvelite uh, mm-hmm. is a Virginian, and over here saying Virginia is expensive, and that makes perfect sense. Uh, oh one yeah, of the first yeah. original states. I think you're gonna be kind of expensive uh, if you're from the states. <laughs> yeah. I know we might have viewers from outside the states. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, getting back to the to the production itself, um, what was your fondest memory of the production? What was there a, a day that just oh, worked man. well and you just you it stands out when you think back to the film? Yeah, that's another one of those where like there are like so many incredible memories of it um i mean besides like patrick stewart like <laughs> asking me about eddie bauer for, <laughs> for so because I, I so we when we shot we only had patrick stewart for like two weeks right and when we and uh two or three weeks i think because i think the first two weeks was all like well, on location stuff and um and we we're shooting at a time when like Oregon's notorious for rain normally, but we were shooting at like a more heavy rain time. And so we're always wearing rain jackets all the time. And I was like very much always wearing Eddie Bauer stuff. That was like my thing. And I always had like big, like I was just covered in Eddie Eddie Bauer stuff. And um, he was just sitting in his chair one day waiting. And I was just basically right next to him. And he was just checking out the thing. And he was like, is Eddie Bauer a real person? And all of us were like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was a real person. We didn't know. So, like, literally literally that night, I went home and did all this research about Eddie Bauer and reported to Patrick Stewart the next day about and did, like, a report about Eddie Bauer for him. He's like, oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, thank you. You gave a report. So that was pretty. On a sport yeah. clothing, on a, on a, on a outdoor yeah. company. On, if clothing. Eddie Bauer was real or not. Yeah, yeah. Is he so. real? I don't know. He was, yeah. He okay. was a real person. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all, yep. But he was remember, really Patrick outdoors. Stewart knew it before we did, so. Yeah, yes, exactly. Patrick Stewart knows now. Okay, that's um, awesome. That's awesome. So but did, I, I do I do think one, did, one of my more number ones. To know. Did you fangirl out about being around Patrick Stewart? You know, I, I was good about it. I did not. I was just, like, trying to be professional as much as I could. You know, it was just really, um, really great to be. I mean, he's exactly how you think he would he would be. He's just like a true gentleman, very gentle, and just um, yeah. You have you can't do nothing but respect the man. You know. Well, you know um, what he does outside of so, acting. I mean, he yeah he's exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. For women's rights, exactly. And, and and yeah. So yeah, I cherish the dude. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. he's a treasure to so, our world. Yeah, um, and and that's why. Yeah, so know, it was awesome to. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was it was funny too. Is it's, it's, he doesn't do an, an American accent very often. I think this is only like his third or fourth film that he did an American accent, or he tried to do an American accent. I don't know if it comes through <laughs> very well, but he he did have a dialect coach there on set, nice. you know, trying to help him. And so he would like practice like right before he would, you know, go on, um, trying to practice his his American accent. But uh, <laughs> yeah. It was funny, but one of my more memorable ones, even more more memorable than that, was um, working with Anton Gelchin, who was like um, just he was an incredible human being. Um, he's exactly how you would think he was too. Uh, he treated everyone regardless of what where you were on the set, like your your ranking or whatnot, if you want to call it that. He didn't he, that didn't matter to him. He treated everyone the same with this equal amount of respect. He and I would like have conversations just about anything. Um, and he, he like, he had a really intense scene 
in inside the green room where he like they all had to like get really worked up you know and stuff like that and um he would do these things to try to get them worked up and some people would kind of like i understood what he was trying to do you know as as an act like i've worked with other actors before and just like i have a really good respect for that craft and um he like thanked me personally for like just trying to have respect for him and trying to like make sure other people didn't come up to him and kind of bug him when he's trying to stay in this like mental space, you know, for the scene, you know, it was just super intense. And so, so that was really kind of a, a touching moment. And, um, and then like, yeah, like Marley, RIP Anton, um, we, we had like a couple of rap parties and our last rap party, I think it was our last rap party. He was like, super high <laughs> he was it was pretty funny yeah he was super awesome. he was just like hugging everybody and it was like a karaoke thing so we were doing karaoke but yeah he was just a really great great human being so yeah no that that's was, my, and thank you for yeah. sharing that you know it, it, it's just a fan of film even my wife who's actually here and thank you for being here uh yeah <laughs> she and i have always been a fan and we were actually like kind of blindsided in a heath ledger style way you know because we were watching his career oh going, yeah this guy is good oh my places. god Yel- anton yelchin had the exactly to go all the way to the top he really did and i think it's amazing what's up how's it going yeah Raph? um so it, it is a it is a, tra- a tragedy it's just one of those young people dying too young yeah just a, a freak, freak accident, accident too you know, like i couldn't believe it like, yeah there was so much mm-hmm. going around that day. Anyway, I, I right. Yeah. I want to pay him it the was... due respect, but I don't want to just sit here and 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 yeah, yeah. Fret too much no. as well, because we have his work right. that we can still look at and appreciate. And if you haven't seen mm-hmm. the Green Room, then please do go see it because it is a brilliant. Yeah, film. he's he's incredible in it. Yeah, he is. He's incredible in almost pretty much yeah. everything he's ever done. Did you ever um Did you ever watch Charlie Bartlett? Because I absolutely loved him in Charlie Bartlett. No, I have not seen Charlie. It's Bartlett, him and actually, Danny yeah. Jr. and it's. Freaking oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, he plays a drug oh, nice. uh, like a prep school drug dealer. Oh wow! So yeah, and I think Downey's the awesome. dean. So that's kind of an interesting yeah. take for him. Oh cool. Um, oh, so funny. Uh, Mr. Marvel, it's asking me about a previous project that I've done. So it's, so <laughs> let me. I, have, I think I'll, I'll have two more questions for you, and then I'm going to open it up to let everybody ask their questions because I want to yeah. let that happen. Um, that sounds cool. You can let everybody ask this question. Uh, as well because they're going to ask you but uh do you own a copy of green room i do not Interesting. actually own a copy yeah i know but that i i did but i um i've had to like dump all of my you know all my physical media kind of stuff so yeah it's just one of those situations i had to like kind of get rid of it that but, makes sense unfortunately they didn't yeah. give you a copy of I do. being in the movie or being part of the production no 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 okay no no we, sure. we did we did get yeah we, we did get wrap gifts nice which I, I i totally spaced i should have like went and grabbed them they're in my storage unit but um like the first ad gave all of us pas like our own wrap gifts specifically just so all, only us pas have it um but it was like a little cool little old school pocket knife hmm. um and then it has like a shotgun on it engraved on it and it says green room because there's a lot of shotgun use in this movie right. a lot of shotguns so like that was kind of the thing and so we i still have that little pocket knife and then we all got hoodies too like the whole crew the cast got hoodies that has like it has like all the weapons that are used <laughs> like awesome. there's machetes a shotgun and like all these different you know so not a shirt so. you would wear on tiktok <laughs> No, not necessarily. Yeah, because like the machete has like blood on it. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, that would stop you. Uh, and hello, yeah, everybody cool. who has also joined because I know my wife. Oh, super comment guru. And Thank you, buddy. I Good to see you. Raph. Okay, just want to make sure I got to say hi to everybody. Uh, so everybody yeah, is up to speed. And then here's my final question, and then I'm going to open it up. What's mm-hmm. the What's the dream? Where do you wish you could take this? Uh, ultimately, do you <sighs> wish you could come out of being a PA and That's go a really... directing, producer? You know, because I'm a um, production assistant makes me think that ultimately, yes, you're working with a director, but you're kind of like the, you know, junior producer for that director kind of thing. Is that how that works? Uh, so traditionally how it works with um, when you're a PA, a set PA, it's a very specific track you can go because you're in like the AD department. 
you're basically the track. If you kept, if I, if I would have kept going, like you, you accumulate so many hours and you like have to keep all your, as far as I understand, you have to keep all your call sheets from all the productions you've done to prove, to show like, and plus like check stubs and stuff like that. That's your right. Um, to, yeah, basically to show how many hours you've done and then you can get into like the, uh, the DGA, you know, which is the director's guild. And, um, you, uh, then can work up to being like a second, second AD and then a second AD and then a first AD. And then eventually maybe a director, if you want, if you want, that is one track you can take. Unfortunately, that is not the track that I wanted. I did not. I, I was very much into camera lighting. I was very like, I, and unfortunately, I don't know if it's like this anymore, but production in like Portland anyway, can be, or was kind of gatekeepy so it kind of it, it can be very hard to get into people kind of like are very protective of their positions um and i tried to sh- i i wanted to get into camera and light and eventually it was very difficult to get into um so that's that's just what i love i love camera and lighting that's kind of like was like my real big drive when i was in film school like it was screenwriting at first i was very much into writing i was like okay i want to do this but then i like fell in love with camera and lighting after i graduated like the first after i got my associates and then it was just cinematography all from there so so unfortunately like being a pa was only going to get me so far right. you know because it would eventually get me to like be an AD, which doesn't really transfer over to like camera department. You do get a like, great set experience, but you want to get into like, even being like a grip or being an electrical department would be better than, cause like you could even be a gaffer, like eventually be a gaffer. And I know I've seen a lot of gaffers go on to be DPs and everything, you know, cause they understand lighting from a technical perspective and then, um, yeah, so that so that that was kind of the dream. Right now, what I do is is very much more creative. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do. Was I wanted to stick with you know feeding that create creative bug and being able to do my own projects here and there and just um, you know if I wasn't getting paid, you know I, I still will do small things and just not even get paid just to like feed that um, that desire for being able to shoot something, you know, so. No, for sure. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. And thank you for that. Uh, and I am going to go ahead. Oh, yeah. hey, Black Girl Marvel uh, showed up and I got it right. She All right. Another hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and open it up. Q&A. Uh, Hi, Maria. All the movie things. Um, here. I've got about 10 minutes that I can stay on for. But then after that, if all the movie things is up for it, you guys can all head over there. And if he wants to, he can keep answering as many questions. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just going to sit back and, and enjoy the questions. And if they came in this side, I'm going to ask them. So, <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. That sounds uh, good. Let's see. So let's see. Oh, um, Emma said she loved you with camera lighting video. I agree. It was great. Oh, awesome. Thank you. And then question from rocker tycoon. Uh, what did you get? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. What did you get your AA in? And have you? Uh, I have, or he has an AA in fine arts. So what mm. did you get your AA in? Yeah. Yeah. So it was also fine arts, um, and then like I got my BF. It's called a. I have a BFA, and they call it digital film and video. So that's what my bachelor's was in eventually. Nice. Yeah. But it, yeah, it does fall under the fine arts category yep uh do you guys know tony gilroy i don't know any tony gilroy i i mean i i know tony i don't know him personally but i know (laughs) i know tony gilroy yeah he's he's a screenwriter and also i'm pretty sure he's directed some stuff but he's he's great i like i love his stuff there you go um oh marley has a question what interests or disinterests you about tiktok I assume that's, that's, um, that's a big question. <laughs> I will say that like one that I've only question? been on. <laughs> yeah, for everybody. Okay. yeah. We're going to get an explosion of people saying things. Um, one of the huge things that I've really loved that I'll, that I've maintained since I've been on, I've been on for like three months. Um, 
almost four months is like meeting people like you and this the community that we've formed you know like yeah just like it's been really great um i mean i look forward to seeing and talking to the same people every day and seeing everyone's videos and like interacting with them and just that's been really that's been really like surprising to me um of course the toxicity is one of the things that i think all of us can agree we don't like right i've been lucky enough to not really run into it personally as well, much with my own stuff but on tiktok the yeah. more you engage with it the more it finds you so the trick yeah. is to True. block and delete that's the trick yeah. is block delete if people yeah. troll you give them a chance if they're being kind of in the middle and they're not getting ridiculous but if they right. double down and they troll right again and aren't throwing jk's then gone yeah um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have an active troll that is my troll and they're trolling really a fantastic person so and, and okay. it's, i'm okay with them. so you kind of give them a pass yeah <laughs> they're like we've talked outside of them like they they've dm'd me and we've chatted so like it's really gotcha like, everybody has their like one troll i don't know you'll you'll get one eventually right so the question <laughs> yes emma asked the question oh, made it. Yes. Uh, do you know andrew hawkins um a really new, nice producer out of washington she says no no i do not okay. andrew hawkins no uh so um, um i re- so like the producers sorry, i will say like i didn't really interact with them too much um they were they weren't on set that often any either so you really don't really interact with the producers too much they kind of just come in and they're office people check stuff one day actually you know what now that i think about it there was one day where we had like all these like they seemed like big wigs that may have been a24 like we had these people come on set and there was like a group of them and it was like a big deal because the other like the actual producers like the local producers were there with them kind of showing them around hmm. and it definitely had like an air of like there were wigs. something so i think yeah i think those are the a24 guys interesting yeah uh so Emma that, says that, that yeah uh, Andrew is a person who primarily does documentaries on horror out of Washington. Oh, and we know Emma is oh a huge, cool. A huge horror fan. So, uh, yeah, she does some great yeah, yeah. horror I love If you don't stuff. follow Emma, the, uh, Emma of the impact, you should do that as well. She's yes. actually, if you aren't following yeah. everybody in this chat, if you guys aren't yeah, following each like, other, yeah. <laughs> we're part of this movie community. Follow each other. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And I try to interact. I think I've interacted with every single person that's in this chat. Um, Oh, is Jay Buck in here? Hey, Jay Buck. So, is he really? That's awesome. What's going on, so, yeah. Jay Buck? You're huge. <laughs> We're just here talking about uh, all the movie things and movies in general. So that's very cool. Any other questions you guys have about? So I kind of want to talk about. So Mr. <laughs> Mr. Marvel, I asked earlier sure. about this ridiculous short film I worked on called Yeti Assassin. Okay, go for it. And this was back in film school, and but but apparently I they put an IMDb credit on there for me for some reason. It's <laughs> um, so Yeti Assassin. It's just what it sounds like. It's this. It's the. It's a comedy, and it's a Yeti. We had we had a, a big guy dressed up in a Yeti costume, just sweating constantly in this Yeti costume. But he was a Yeti, and he was going through like this assassin training, you know. And he's this big old white Yeti. <laughs> trying to become an assassin and this whole thing like yeah i mean i it's like so it funny. i like the premise <laughs> yeah it um, it was pretty good like it, it gets it's got some good laughs in there but yeah i it, that was a perfect example of like i i did sound on it i was in it also i was like in the background and then um what else did i do i did some other i did like three different things on that one but yeah that was pretty fun um that's great but that's is literally that, what it's how would like, we but... find that can i watch that somewhere is that a hard uh, it find? might be um like a youtube thing maybe yeah it might be on youtube yeah it's 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 kind of old but um what's marvel it says by the way the production page is still active oh <laughs> he says the production page is still active and there is a picture of me there <laughs> i had no idea <laughs> no as soon as you oh there's a trailer the details, there's, oh, there's a trailer okay so Mar- there's a trailer on vimeo he Mr. Says, Marvel, yeah. throw that on the discord that he's trailer. doing all the <laughs> um please do like it's pretty uh, funny if you yeah, guys yeah. aren't on my discord all the movie things is on my discord i'm on my discord mr marvel like mm-hmm. Black Girl Marvel, uh, all on the Discord, and we have the other things we do besides movies on there as well: photography, right. art, 
Uh, Mr. Marvelite does um, all of our own little things. Yeah, she does. She does acting. Um, so that we we're all a, yeah. a troop, if you will, and we're trying to promote each other yeah. heavily and, and really have a good time with it. Um, yeah. So yeah, do you guys have any other questions while we're here? Um, just want to make sure everybody had a chance. To I just want to say thanks to everyone that came out for this Agreed. thing. It's pretty amazing. Like it just goes back to what I said about the community. Like everyone's so supportive and it's like super late for some people too like you guys are like troopers hanging in there for <laughs> for us yeah. to like i mean especially if you want. yeah, well, yeah no, it's so. saturday night i gave it to them on a saturday yeah. that's you know a lot of people get to sleep in tomorrow at, at least right. if they don't work retail um mm -hmm. so yeah no um but thank you it's I, been I figured, cool seeing everyone uh, here yeah i agree this has been a blast yeah favorite project you ever worked on um i mean it's kind of tough to beat green room you know, so it's like, like, man, there's like one thing I want to talk about green room was the makeup effects. Mm -hmm. Like that was all practical makeup effects. Like there was nothing. So like Mark Weber, <laughs> it was insane. He gets blasted in the face. Spoiler alert. He gets blasted in the face with a shotgun and they created a makeup effect of that when he gets blasted in the face. Like we had an Academy Award nominated makeup artist from Bad Grandpa um from the johnny knoxville film he, he was nominated for an academy award for that makeup effect he was on green room and literally made this crazy makeup effect and it was hilarious when you'd stand next to, like i would stand next to mark and just look at him wearing this ridiculous prosthetic and it was like it looked real when you stand right next to it like it, it was gooey and bloody and gorgeous gory and but it was funny because he's just like walking around like normal having conversations with people with the disgusting could he eat through it head blown up like yeah he could totally okay. eat there, <laughs> have drinks and stuff yeah i know they so try to funny, do that for actors it's... like they do their best to keep yeah the, the important yeah yeah he could anyway. totally still like breathe and stuff but it looked heavy i mean so he was kind of like yeah it was <laughs> it was awesome and then how they did it was it was like an editing effect like it was a quick cut they did from the time when he doesn't when like the, when he finds a shotgun and then from the time it actually goes off, it was like an edit effect that they did. So there's no like real CG in there. It's just all practical and like Patrick Stewart's head is practical. Um, That's amazing. The dog. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. The dog. Oh, so we had a dog puppet. So we had real dogs and then a dog puppet for like the close-ups. That was a puppet and everything like mauling their necks and everything. Yeah. That's wild. So and the dogs are amazing. Oh my god, these dogs! Like I was just blown away by these dogs. Like. Someone give this dog an award because there they are knew no how to film act. dog awards. What is that? I know, like what the, the, the and, should be because they're the amazing. Thing, like, like you watch movies that are even not that old, ten years old, and those dogs are passed on already. Yeah, it's yeah, sad. like yeah. not to like ruin every movie a, for everybody, this, but no, but yeah, <laughs> but this pit bull had to like act injured, you know, and walk out of the thing acting injured, and like, oh, man, I don't and know, I just felt I <laughs> just. No, and it wasn't injured. Like they knew how to act, <laughs> have like a little limp, and yeah, the dog and it had like the heavy chain around his neck and everything. And they're a super cool dog. Uh, yeah. Raph asked what Patrick Stewart was like, and we we went over the Eddie Bauer. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the Eddie Bauer story. He yeah, he's just super cool. Um, I I mean, yeah. Every, well, the thing was too like no one really like fanned out around them. Everyone was really professional, but, I, but there's definitely like this, you knew you were working with Patrick Stewart. You know, everyone had this like massive respect for him. Mm. Um, ever all captain. like, then the cast well, is the captain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the captain's true. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, and then the funny thing captain. is too, is like, yeah, no, yeah, same. And like, I have like two Star Trek next generation people. Like, so there's Patrick Stewart. And then I've then on the librarians, um, Jonathan Frakes was the director on a lot of the librarians episodes. You worked with Frakes? So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we he's called his nickname is Two Takes Frakes on set because he like he just loves to go fast. And like if he doesn't get in two takes, then then it's not gonna it's not gonna work. So. He wants two choices <laughs> at least. I mean he, Yeah, exactly. He's he's like done after two takes. He's like, We're moving on. And um he's what if he didn't get what he wanted? He's super cool. I don't know. It... I know, yeah, yeah. But he, he usually did. Like he's he he's could be a hard director. ass when he wanted to be. I yeah. actually think he's pretty so, good. He's directed some Star Trek films, if you didn't know. Yeah, like yeah. one of the, one of his first was on Next Generation, yep. um, his first time directing. Yep. And I actually had to pick him up from the airport in his car. And like he let me 
drive it on the way back too. So he didn't want to drive. So he just let you me drive. Drove <laughs> I was just like, car. yeah. So we drove him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Every yeah. Star Trek the car he had a Portland, fan anyway. right now is like fan <laughs> like all over you. So that's pretty that's funny. Just me. I'm, yeah. Anyway, that's very cool. Those He's are some great cool. stories. I appreciate you yeah, coming on here and telling me these great stories because no, thank you, man. Like it, it was so awesome. It it is. Yeah. And, and I would love to talk more. And it, you please bring your uh, set gifts or your production gifts, rap gifts, whatever I forget, rap gifts, I think you called them. Yeah, uh, rap. Yeah, you get rap gifts. Bring yeah. them on the show even and show us there if you want to. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Try yeah. to work on zooming in on us and see how that works. Uh, that might be oh. interesting. But we're going to get into a <laughs> much more. just show them up on the pro- camera like right? that. But we'll get into a yeah. production level thing that I'm not sure I'm ready for, but we'll see. Um, anyway, yeah. everybody, thank you for being here. And um, Yeah, no, it's been fun. Me and all the movie things tomorrow at 7 o'clock pacific standard time mm-hmm. on the real study uh where we'll be doing want to see we're doing kate the new netflix movie and then malignant on yeah. hbo max and malignant. we're going to catch up on the what if episodes so if you haven't caught up on those do yeah that. and then i think a lot the to last talk about man is in our future yes yeah so we'll be we'll be covering that great. show as well because we like to cover shows like a show and some movies like so that we're always yeah got something so anyway yeah you guys have a fantastic night